Copy that, Tracer. Deorbit sequence start. Cool, so we got the call from the core that the deorbit sequence is starting. Again, we're going to be starting off with the um, separation of the claw and then eventually the trunk. Uh, so again, you'll hear those um, beeps throughout the uh, cast today. Those are quindar tones, and effectively, effectively what those uh, do is they help to clear the air to make sure that communication to and from uh, the crew and ground are nice and clear. So uh, Jesse and I will try, will try to pause and make sure that uh, you guys also um, are able to listen in uh, to that as well. But uh, I was mentioning the uh, splashdown site. So we have uh, primary and alternate splashdown sites located off of the coast of Florida. The selection process works, uh, and it takes into a lot of um, it takes into account a lot of different variables. And um, effectively, what those it, it, uh, do is it looks at weather. The it looks at to make sure um, that communication um, to know, and from wave height, uh, wave uh, period, uh, visibility as well. Yeah, and you can see on your screen, uh, this is the primary uh, landing site. And it looked like the waters were pretty calm, so that's pretty great. Uh, today, our primary landing site will get the crew uh, back home with a splashdown at about 4.06 p.m. Pacific time today. And for return, we'll be looking at a number of weather items. Um, some of the obvious ones that we do uh, take into account is that there's no rain um, or chance capsule, but also the recovery teams on the water. Um, we're also looking for wind speeds less than 15 feet per second or about 10 miles per hour, relatively calm seas so that we can safely execute recovery operations, which includes landing a helicopter on the recovery ship to fly Jared, Haley, Cyan and Chris back to Florida. Yeah, and if you've been following along since Wednesday, we had mentioned that uh, for this particular mission, weather was of uh, particular uh, importance. Um, uh, the inspiration for our crew did not go for an extended duration to the International Space Station. They were orbiting the Earth uh, for the duration of their mission. So we had to make sure that weather was good on ascent uh, at liftoff and also for splashdown today. But uh, as Jesse mentioned, um, Looks like we have some pretty good visibility. The waves are not choppy. Um, and so things are looking great for an on-time splashdown uh, later on today. And for these operations, SpaceX closely coordinates with the United States Coast Guard to establish a safety zone to ensure public safety and for the safety of those involved in the recovery operations, as well as the crew on board the returning spacecraft. Multiple notices are issued to the Mariners in advance and during um, recovery operations, like and Coast Guard patrol boats are deployed to discourage boaters from entering these splashdown zones. Now, we want to stress to the public the need to respect the safety zone. Recovering a spacecraft from the water is a hazardous operation, and any other boats interfering increases risk to the astronauts in the capsule, the teams working to recover them from the water, and the safety of those that come too close. So for the safety of our crew and for your safety, we recommend that you sit back and watch as we'll be bringing you the best possible views of our astronauts' homecoming. Dragon, nominal trunk jettison. And copy that, SpaceX. We definitely felt it. <laughs> <laughs> So awesome. it looks like we had successful call separation. Mm -hmm. Again, that um, uh, detaches the umbilical the that allows separated. power and fluids to, from the trunk to Dragon. So now Dragon has also separated its trunk successfully. And so that does a couple of things for us. Um, when we re-enter and the parachutes deploy, we want to make sure that there is as little mass as possible. It gives the parachutes a bit easier time to um, decelerate the, the vehicle. The second thing it does is um, there are some uh, heat uh, some heat shields and some uh, pika tiles uh, that we'll talk about a little bit later on. Uh, and their job is to protect the capsule and the crew from all of the heat that's being generated during re-entry. Jettisoning the, the trunk exposes that heat tile and um, uh, allows it to face forward uh, during re-entry. Yeah, and again, now the Dragon capsule is on battery power. Um, so the trunk typically provides uh, power while they're in orbit. Um, now that we no longer have the trunk, um, it, it is working on battery power, and it will have enough battery power um, and then some to uh, make its way back home to Earth. So up next, we have the deorbit burn. This is the last time that the forward Dracos, which are the four thrusters located uh, at the top of the vehicle, will ignite. The deorbit burn will place Dragon on a precise trajectory to return to the splashdown zone uh, off the coast of Florida and last about 15 minutes. 
Yeah, and again, uh, this journey back home actually started yesterday with two phase burns. Uh, those two phase burns, uh, as you may know, the crew made their way all the way out to uh, 575 kilometers away from Earth. I think the furthest they went was 590 kilometers um, during their mission. Uh, but the two phase the two phase burns yesterday did bring them back down to approximately 365 uh, kilometers. Um, so after those phase burns, this helps bring them just a little bit closer to Earth. And then today, after we've now jettisoned the trunk, we will have a deorbit burn, which will set them on the trajectory back to the splashdown uh, landing zone. Yeah, so we are expecting that deorbit burn to begin uh, in about three minutes. Uh, again, it is uh, going to last for about 15 minutes. Uh, and uh, as Jesse mentioned, uh, that is uh, sort of the final burn before Dragon uh, begins to reduce its altitude, um, get away from that orbital velocity of 17,500 miles an hour, and start to make its way uh, to its splashdown zone off the coast of Florida. Yeah. And so, yeah. Very exciting day, yeah. <laughs> um, and honestly, for the crew, a very exciting week. Um, if you've been following along, um, it hasn't even been a full week uh, since they've started their dress rehearsals last Sunday. They lifted off and, and got into orbit on Wednesday, and now, just a few days later, they're coming back home. Yeah, and this has been such an incredible mission. Again, um, this mission uh, was to help fundraise money for St. Jude. Uh, their mission was to raise, uh, try and raise $200 million for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Um, and again, just such an incredible, incredible mission with the first uh, all civilian crew on board out in orbit into space, um, but also inspiring the world. Um, with all their the the positions that they they selected for the seats for uh, who should be on this mission, um, the seat of leadership, the seat of prosperity, the seat of generosity, and the seat of hope. So, just an overall incredible uh, last few days, and now we're currently bringing the crew back home, which is very very exciting. <laughs> yeah, and they've been uh, quite busy as all astronauts. Um, uh, are, but uh, I love that they were able to spend some time and, and um, they gave us an on-orbit update yesterday. We saw mm -hmm. Chris play the ukulele. We <laughs> saw um, Haley do some somersaults in space. Uh -huh. I think uh, Dr. Cyan also showed us um, the drawings um, that she had done in space too, which was phenomenal. Just so amazing, and she's been inspired by their own launch. So she showed us uh, some drawings of that, um, and just really cool to, to see the crew up there. They had a, a, a number of events as well. Um, they what their conversation I was know. like, um, but uh, I think it's quite interesting because we all know Tom Cruise from um, Top Gun, call sign Maverick. Mm -hmm. uh, the crew themselves also got call signs because they were a part of a lot of fighter jet training and mm -hmm. exercises. So I love that uh, they were able to connect. Yeah, that must be so exciting for them. Um, also, they, they've been doing some auctions. You know, we've had some auctions uh, since the mission began, um, and they did some uh, of, of that promotion as well. Uh, I, I can't wait to get one of the zero-G indicators. Yes. <laughs> Um, I think those sold out very, very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> um, the space dog, you might have seen it. Uh, we might be able to get shots of it uh, if we uh, ever get um, shots inside the cabin again. But um, yeah, super cute. And um, also, re again, represents a great cause. Uh, I, I do want to do a quick plug that if you are watching on YouTube, there is a Donate Now button on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, we fundraised a ton of money so far. I think since Wednesday, we've raised an additional um, Twenty million dollars. So we're we're at about 153 million dollars raised out of the total goal of 200 million dollars. So um, thank you to everyone that has already donated. And uh, if you can um, donate in any sh way, shape, or form, please do. Super appreciate it. And, and again, it's all for a great cause. Yeah, such an incredible mission. Again, um, they also got the chance. Yesterday was Friday. They did get to to ring the closing bell at the New York Stock Exchange, which is pretty awesome. You can see them there. You see how excited they are, too. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, every time we've seen the crew 
um, they've had smiles in their face, even during ascent, oh, right? We yeah. saw Dr. Sian mm -hmm. um, just uh, uh, exuding excitement. And so uh, this crew really is something else. And, I, and I'm so glad that they got to experience the things that they experienced and, and all the outreach that they've done so far is, is quite amazing. Yeah, and for the first all civilian crew, these are some pretty incredible people. Um, if, if you've been following along or if you, you haven't seen it yet, Netflix and Time have a documentary um, on the crew and on the mission. Um, gets lets you get to know uh, the crew wow, a lot look more at and get to see what the training they're, they're going through. That's and this incredible. is an incredible. awesome live view from our selfie camera on the Dragon looking at the dragon cupola and the sun looks amazing earth looks amazing Look at the clouds. that's <laughs> amazing and, and and for the inspiration for our crew to peek their head in there and get a first person perspective through the brand new cupola oh gosh <laughs> um that is uh fantastic and i think chris um has been very very busy taking photos um, of the earth through the cupola and um, you know just trying to make as much uh, of his time and space as possible and give back uh, to the community oh there he is <laughs> and there he is with his camera we've heard he's been taking tons and tons of photos up there i can't wait to see um, what photos they have uh, there he is <laughs> inside of the cupola Looks yes awesome. as busy as ever and chris himself and crew a lot more and get to see what yourself uh, on the dragon looking at the dragon cupola and the sun looks amazing earth looks amazing Look at the clouds. that's <laughs> amazing and, and and for the inspiration for our crew to peek their head in there and get a first person perspective through the brand new cupola oh gosh <laughs> um, um that yeah, and again, in the last 10 minutes or so, um, we've had a number of events during this deep orbit sequence. Uh, we had claw separation. The claw is basically what attaches the dragon trunk to the capsule um, and, and has umbilicals um, between the two. We've jettisoned uh, the dragon trunk, uh, exposing the heat shields on the bottom of the capsule. Um, and now we are currently in progress of the deorbit orbit burn, which is going to basically deorbit the vehicle um, and get it on a trajectory on its way back home to Earth. Yeah, the deorbit orbit burn uses the Draco engines on Dragon. Um, there are 16 of them uh, on the um, forward uh, uh, so underneath the nose cone, there are four there, and um, after we're done with this deorbit burn, that's, uh, we're not going to need those four anymore, so we'll close the hatch. Um, Dragon also has another um, subset of engines known as the Super Dracos. We're not using them as part of the splashdown. They're super strong, um, and they're really only reserved for um, the launch escape system during ascent or in case there was an emergency, but we're just relying on the Draco engines right now. And what you're looking at on your screen is a live view inside of Dragon. And on your left-hand side is the commander of this mission, Jared Isaacman. On the right-hand side was Dr. Sian Proctor, the pilot for the mission. And again, awesome view uh, from the outside, looking at the cupola on the Amazing Dragon view. and the four wow. Draco thrusters. This is actually the location of where those four Draco thrusters are. Um, and as Andy mentioned, uh, once we do complete this deorbit burn, it's only going to last about 15 minutes. Once we complete that, we will begin uh, to close the nose cone, which will uh, basically cover this top portion that you're seeing on the screen. Wow. Yeah, I, I love this shot. Um, if you pay co close attention, so the, the team is suited up in their spacesuits. The gloves themselves are actually conductive, so they can still use the touch screen um, and interface with um, the monitors through the spacesuits. Um, and right now we have the visors up, um, but the suits themselves, uh, the way they're created, it's, it's a one-piece suit, and um, the helmets are actually 3D printed and customized for each of the crew members. Yeah, and right now, um, Jared, Cyan, Haley, and Chris are currently using their screens on their tabs, um, and they're, they're basically following along every one of these events. Um, uh, you know, they are out in space and inside of this vehicle, so when the thrusters do turn on, they do feel that, um, and they do hear um, uh, some of that from inside of the, the capsule. It doesn't exactly sound like uh, what you would hear an engine sound like down here on Earth, but they do hear uh, some of the clicking of the valves uh, when the engines do start. Yeah, so the Inspiration4 crew has been on orbit for about three days. Um, we're expecting them to splash down uh, in about 40 minutes, actually. And so, um, especially after we finish the deorbit burn, uh, things are really going to start to move. We'll close the nose cone, and then we're going to start uh, the, the Dragon capsule is going to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. We're going to go through that um, 
uh, period of uh, communications blackout for a couple of minutes. Um, and then uh, the parachutes is deployed, and we're going to see them back here on Earth uh, in, in just under 40 minutes. Yeah, and this is a significant thing uh, to mention. There will be a blackout period for approximately seven minutes, uh, and that happens when the vehicle does enter back into the Earth's atmosphere. Um, it, outside of the Dragon capsule will heat up to almost 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and what that will do is cause a layer of plasma around the vehicle, which will prevent some comms um, from, from coming through. Uh, but once they are through that period, we should be able to regain those comms. Uh, the core here at, in Mission Control Hawthorne uh, will do some comm checks to make sure that they have reestablished those comms between Dragon. So we're about 41 minutes here from Splashdown. And the DR orbit burn is ongoing right now. It's about 15 minutes So if minutes you are long. just joining us, uh, we are part of the Inspiration4 mission uh, for Splashdown. Uh, the team is uh, targeted to uh, Splashdown off the coast of Florida at approximately 4.06 p.m. Pacific time. Right now, we are in the middle of our deorbit burn. So this is... Okay, it's the stop final spinning. burn before um, the Dragon spacecraft uh, really is on its final trajectory towards that targeted landing site. We're just about 10 minutes into burn, meaning there's about five minutes left of that deorbit burn, and right now you are looking at a live view inside of the Dragon capsule of the crew uh, watching and checking things on their display panels there. Again, they are following along with all of the events uh, so that they are aware of every expected event that is uh, supposed to happen. And uh, again, a awesome live view from the outside of our Dragon capsule on the forward end, looking at our amazing... 120 kilometers, Dragon is committed. We just heard some comms that Dragon is committed. What that means is that they are committed to return back to Earth. <laughs> yes, they are. They are coming back, which is super exciting. So uh, I should mention at this point, uh, Dragon itself is an extremely intelligent vehicle. Um, it is uh, largely autonomous and uh, effectively flying itself. So um, it knows where it's at, um, its position in space, it knows where it's headed. It has the ability to adjust its uh, attitude or angle um, and trajectory as needed uh, to make sure it is headed where it, it needs to head. And so even through the communications blackout period, again, um, due to the temporary buildup of plasma, that interferes with communications. Um, even through that period, uh, the crew really just has to sit back and enjoy the flight because Dragon um, is smart enough to know where exactly it's going to be. Yeah, so much so that we saw them watching some movies <laughs> <laughs> just a few minutes ago. Five minutes. You are hearing on the comms just some status updates of that uh, deorbit burn. Again, this deorbit burn lasts about 15 minutes long, um, and we're getting close to completion here. And actually, something to note, uh, if there are people watching live uh, for Splashdown, um, they might actually get to hear the sonic boom uh, as uh, quickly as Dragon re-enters the Earth's atmosphere and, and is coming down. You know, they will be traveling faster than the, the speed of sound. So um, you'll get a, a sonic boom um, when, they, when they come back through. Yeah, I think that the folks that um are nearby or live close enough to the coast. They might even be able to see Dragon. It is uh, a daytime splashdown, uh, which is super exciting. Um, so yeah, in, 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 in about 35 minutes, we're expecting Dragon uh, capsule resilience, uh -huh. uh, flying for the second time and returning for the second time, uh, and the Inspiration4 crew members to return back to Earth and uh, splashdown into the coast, uh, off the coast of Florida. 
Yeah, and again, we, we just heard a call out that we're probably about three minutes away from that deorbit burn completing. Um, but yeah, Andy, it's been so exciting. Just this mission uh, overall has been so incredible. Again, the first all civilian crew to go to orbit um, in and they're raising money for St. Jude. It's, it's just been an incredible mission so far. They've been out in space, um, you know, talking to St. Jude's patients, raising money, um, doing some science experiments for us so that we can see, you know, what does, does microgravity do to, you know, the regular person like FPM you and me. Like 13 minutes. Yeah, I think uh, you bring up a good point that I don't think we've talked about yet is all the science that they've done. Um, we saw earlier in the week um, some experiments with some portable um, ultrasound uh, devices. There was an experiment to study how um, fluid shifts and um, uh, uh, sort of the relevance of up and down in space that could potentially help contribute to motion sickness both in space and back here on Earth. Uh, but the, the really cool thing in my opinion is all of the data all the data that they're going to um, uh, gather, that's going to be put in a repository, and everyone has access to it, essentially. Um, and so you, you typically don't get that with um, uh, normal missions. Uh, but for Inspiration4, I think one of the hallmarks is they wanted to make sure that um, they were trying to further science as much as possible and further human space exploration. Yeah, having that, the access to that data available to literally the entire world uh, only allows you to have, you know, as many people uh, to utilize that research and, and you know, be able to do something remaining. with it. We're just, uh, that call out was just a minute remaining in this deorbit burn. Very exciting. <laughs> So after the deorbit burn, um, again, we won't need the uh, Draco thrusters in the uh, forward bulkhead anymore. And so we will be initiating the close of the nose cone. Oh, here's a great animation. Uh, the nose cone is the very, very top. Um, you're going to see it latch open. Um, that's where the Draco thrusters are at. But um, after they're done firing, we're actually going to be closing it. And so uh, if you're here since the beginning of this particular cast, the bottom section of the capsule, that's the trunk section, um, the bottom half of that has already been jettisoned. Um, and right now, the top portion, the capsule, that's where the crew is in. And that is what is returning to Earth and making it splash down off the coast of Florida uh, here Thank in a few for minutes. Termination. Burn stop. I mean, it'll burn. Good targeting. No Dragon, the orbit burn complete, performance nominal. The orbit no burn closure complete. is initiated. Copy that, SpaceX, we show the same. I believe that was Chris uh, confirming that uh, he had a nominal burn. Uh, everything seems to be going great. And now, again, we've initiated the close um, sequence of the nose cone. So in the background, Dragon is currently inhibiting those forward bulkhead Draco thrusters that we uh, had just used to complete the deorbit burn, ensuring that it's safe to latch the nose cone, sh nose cone shut for re-entry. The vehicle also initiated the Nitrox suit purge, and this will help keep the crew cool and comfortable during re-entry, which is coming up in about 20 minutes. At this point, the nose cone is closing and protecting the forward hatch for re-entry. The crew is using the screens that we saw earlier to monitor the locking of nose cone, which is done um, actually by a set of hooks. Yeah, and again, uh, the nose cone doesn't just snap shut. Uh, it does take a few minutes, I think about four minutes or so uh, to close. Um, it is a very, uh, you know, uh, technically and structurally um, sound uh, seal that needs to happen there. So it needs to be very precise, which is why it's a very slow uh, mechanism to make sure that it's closed. Yes, and we mentioned earlier, um, as Dragon is re-entering, uh, it's, uh, it's going to form plasma, and, and plasma is effectively superheated Salute gas. Salute by his entry attitude complete. So that call out was uh, for the slew being complete. So the slew is effectively maneuvering. And so uh, we want to position Dragon and orient it a certain way uh, before it starts to re enter the Earth's atmosphere. So that looks like it's going well. Um, but I mentioned a little bit about uh, the 
the temperature buildup around the heat shield and dragon. Um, so we initiate a nitrox purge in both the cabin and the suits to keep um, the environment in. The suits themselves will also have temperatures. above 85 degrees Fahrenheit and and if it does we'll just purge them with uh, effectively air it's the same sort of air that you would see in a scuba tank and that keeps the astronauts nice and comfortable for their journey back to earth yeah, it's basically their own personal AC system <laughs> um, and as we mentioned we are coming up on uh, the blackout period which is about 10 minutes or so from now uh, or 10 minutes after nose cone closure again nice and cool uh, the suits themselves will automatically detect if temperatures go above 85 degrees Fahrenheit and, and if it does we'll just purge them with uh, effectively air it's the same sort of air that you would see in a scuba tank and that keeps the astronauts nice and comfortable for their journey back to earth it's basically their own personal AC system. <laughs> um, and as we mentioned, we are coming up on uh, the blackout period, which is about 10 minutes or so from now, uh, or 10 minutes after nose cone closure. Um, and during that event, uh, the capsule, the, the exterior of the capsule will get to approximately 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. So as Andy mentioned, it's extremely important to keep the cabin cool, to keep um, the astronauts uh, cool during this event. Uh, but Dragon was designed for this, um, so uh, they, they shouldn't have any problems with uh, 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> Yeah, we've got some really cool material on the bottom. Um, uh, it's known as, it's actually called Pika 3.0, uh, and uh, its job is basically to deflect and, um, and take on all of that heat and make sure that we keep the capsule and crew nice and cool again for their re-entry. Uh, if you're looking on screen right now, uh, there is a capsule, a dragon capsule in the background. You can see at the very bottom, uh, the tiling of that peak of material. Um, that is a return to capsule. So it's been through the Earth's atmosphere. It's taken on that 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit heat. And, and that's what we expect the capsule uh, today to also look like upon reentry. Yeah, and this is a, a flown dragon capsule. So. While the spacecraft is in orbit, it's flying at about 17,500 miles per hour. 30 minutes uh, until splashdown. But as it comes down. back through the atmosphere, we actually don't, you know, there's no brakes on uh, on Dragon aside from the heat shield. Um, and so it, that heat shield actually, uh, with the atmosphere, helps to slow the vehicle down to about 350 miles per hour uh, before the, the droves even deploy. Yeah, it's, it's quite uh, incredible to think about that. Um, Orbital velocity, again, 17,500 miles an hour, uh, being slowed down to just 350 miles an hour with just atmospheric drag alone mm -hmm. um, is, is incredible. And then, and then from there, we deploy the chutes. And so right. most of the job, thank you to Earth's atmosphere <laughs> for slowing down uh, Dragon. Most of it is done uh, by the friction um, up there. Apologies, Phil. Which is, um, we're going to be uh, waiting on confirmation that the nose cone has been closed. And then uh, we're going to be entering that blackout uh, portion, the, back, uh, the communications blackout period, a few minutes later. It is expected to last uh, for about seven minutes. And um, what I would expect to hear is um, we heard those Quindar tones, those beeps uh, from crew to, uh, to core and core to crew. Um, expect those to um, start to um, pop up again as we're coming out of that blackout period. We want to make sure that we reestablish communication with the crew. Yeah, and actually, uh, before we go into the blackout period, we should hear some comms as well. Um, again, the, the core here uh, in Hawthorne, uh, Mission Control Hawthorne, uh, communicates with the team, makes sure that they know which event is coming up next uh, so that they know what to expect. Um, and so we should be hearing uh, some of that confirmation that they will be going into the blackout period as well as uh, some confirmation and some comms when they uh, exit that period. So we are going to have a loss of signal here coming up. Um, basically, the the scary part of reentry as uh, as Dra Dragon tries to slow down. Um, so they're going to lose comms for seven minutes. Uh, that is expected. So we all get to wait and hope that everything goes perfectly and that we reestablish comms on the other end. They're splashing down just off the coast of Florida. So again, we are currently just waiting for confirmation of nose cone closure. Um, once we confirm that, uh, the next event after that will be the blackout period that we have mentioned. Um, again, that will last about seven minutes.
what you're seeing on your screen right now is Mission Control Hawthorne uh, here at SpaceX headquarters. It looks like you can see uh, Gwen Shotwell <laughs> sitting in the front row there uh, watching as our first all civilian crew, the Inspiration4 crew, returns back home to Earth. Yeah, and the recovery team and the launch team did a great job uh, looking at weather, looking ahead, because um, uh, Florida weather in the fall is can be tricky, uh, <laughs> but we got excellent weather um, during liftoff on Wednesday and um, a pretty darn good weather right now for Splashdown as well. Yeah, when we did get some live views of the, the seas there, it did look pretty calm, which is exactly what we want. We want to make sure that uh, during recovery, uh, you know, we have some, some steady seas, uh, not just for the crew. Dragon, nose cone is secure for entry. Nose cone secure. Sounds like we got that confirmation of nose cone closure. So as we begin the second half of entry, Dragon is now beginning to flush nitrox into the cabin and continuing to top off the Inspiration4 crew's suits with cool air. Again, this is what will allow the cabin temperature to remain comfortable while external temperatures can reach upwards of 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, again, the heat shield is pointing forward. That's the leading um, structure that is going to uh, be heading into re-entry, um, and that's going to be what leads the capsule to the landing site. And again, uh, the exterior of the capsule will get to approximately 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit, but again, Dragon was designed for this dynamic event, uh, so there will be uh, some cool air um, inside of the cabin. It's environmentally controlled, as well as through their suits. Um, they do have their personal air conditioning uh, inside of their suits where they will get uh, a flow of nitrox. Um, and as Andy mentioned earlier, uh, there are sensors in the suits, so they don't even have to think about if they're getting too hot or not. Uh, the suits will just automatically um, keep the, the environment controlled inside of their suits for them. Okay, this is a great view of the suit. Uh, mm -hmm. First off, looking super cool slick and super suits. cool, um, but it is essentially a, a, a mini spacecraft. There's an umbilical from the um, leg portion that will hook up to Dragon, and that will route um, communications and electronics, as well as, uh, again, routing the air needed to keep the suit pressurized in case of a depressurization event, a depressurization event um, or um, if they need to be purged with cool air, it can do that as well. Yeah, and some of the cool manufacturing features, the helmet is 3D printed. Um, the material uh, of the, the exterior of the suit is um, heat resistant, uh, as well as the gloves are uh, designed, uh, they're conductive, so that they're designed to be able to use them on the touch screen. Yeah, and, and again, they're all custom made for each of the astronauts. Um, the chairs themselves are also custom fitted. There are um, a couple of different sizes and the armrests can be adjusted um, uh, for the astronauts' uh, preference. And so, um, you know, we, we want to make sure, again, the, the crew is as comfortable and as safe as possible for landing. Um, the, the seats will actually recline up to its landing position. And then um, uh, there is a five point, um, a belt uh, that will keep the astronauts in place uh, to make sure that everything uh, is nice and comfortable for the team. Is. And uh, we have a dragon tracker, and that's what you're seeing on your screen. You can see um, that dragon is currently to the west um, of South America there. And on their way, you can kind of see their trajectory uh, heading towards the coast of Florida uh, for their splashdown today. Yeah, we are expecting to enter that um, that blackout uh, uh, period in about two minutes. Here, uh, we should hear the um, the core communicate uh, to the team here in a couple of minutes um, that we are again entering that blackout period, and then we'll reestablish communication uh, once we're through with that. Dragon SpaceX for entry brief. Go SpaceX. Jared, you're looking good. No deltas to timeline. Vehicles nominal, tracking no issues. The deorbit burn was right down the middle with nominal landing site targeting. 
Excellent. The Delta's on weather or recovery, and we're looking forward to having you home shortly. And copy that, SpaceX. Good to orbit burn. Good to orbit burn. Vehicles healthy. Recovery forces are there. Weather's looking good. See you guys soon. Good to be back. So we heard um, some awesome calls uh, from the core. Uh, the do over burn looked good. Uh, uh, Reentry and weather all looked good. Um, so everything you would want to hear for Splashdown, uh, we got it. And so things are looking great uh, for Splashdown in um, about 20 minutes here. Uh, so um, super exciting and things will start to get uh, very, very dynamic and a lot of events will happen over the next 20 minutes or so. So at this point, we are entering um, here shortly a communications blackout period, which lasts approximately seven minutes due to plasma formation around the spacecraft. Uh, during this time, uh, no vehicle telemetry is received by mission control or the recovery team, uh, and no external, no external commanding of the vehicle or voice communication is possible. As a reminder, though, Dragon is designed to fly itself and continues to autonomously... So Dragon is designed to fly itself and continues to autonomously use its Draco thrusters to orient itself during re-entry. So uh, during re-entry, the vehicle will be slowing down from orbital velocity, which is approximately 17,500 miles an hour, um, all the way down to about 350 to 400 miles an hour before we deploy those chutes. And we did hear a call out of 200 uh, kilometers. Uh, that is basically telling us that the Dragon capsule is getting closer and closer to Earth. Again, they went all the way out to orbit uh, at about 575 kilometers from Earth. I think the furthest they went was 590 kilometers. Um, but now they're on their way back home, so they're approximately 200 kilometers at this moment. Um, and again, today uh, we are bringing the crew back home. Um, we've begun uh, several uh, uh, operations during this deorbit sequence, uh, but actually deorbit and return home began yesterday. We did have a couple phase burns yesterday that brought the, the vehicle down to approximately 365 kilometers. Um, and now we're getting closer and closer to bring, bringing the crew back home. It's getting really exciting over here. Um, can't wait to see, uh, see them back on Earth after their trip to orbit. Yeah, so uh, Jesse mentioned yesterday we started some uh, downhill phasing burns. There were two of them to lower the altitude. Uh, earlier today, we saw, uh, we didn't see, but we got confirmation of the trunk jettison. Uh, the trunk jettison. We completed our deorbit burn successfully, and right now, uh, Dragon is um, uh, going through its uh, re-entry phase and through its um, blackout uh, communications portion. And shortly here, we're going to have splashdown um, after our parachutes deploy. And, you know, I can't believe this mission is, um, has, has come and gone so quickly. Uh, the crew has been, again, super busy. And I do want to remind um, all of our viewers that uh, this inspiration for mission, this inspiration for crew, it's, it's all for a great cause. We want to make sure that we further human space exploration. We want to do a ton of science. And we want to fundraise for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Um, the goal is $200 million. Uh, Jared Isaacman donated $100 million himself. And we're a little over halfway um, through the other $100 million that we want to um, uh, fundraise. So if you're watching on YouTube, if you have a computer nearby, you can go to inspiration4.com slash donate and um, support the cause there. There's also a bunch of different things like auctions. Um, Dragon, SpaceX, please verify crew entry preparations complete with tablets, restraints, visors, and feet. And Capitat SpaceX, we were just waiting a little bit longer, but we'll do it right now. It's 
Trace X Dragon, tablets are secure, restraints are tight, and visors are down. We are ready to come home. We copy all, Dragon. Approximately four minutes, 30 seconds until calm blackout. We'll see you on the other side at 2300. Zero, zero. Talk to you at 2300. Just under five minutes away from that blackout period. So uh, what you're seeing on your screen is the core, the, the crew operations and resources engineer communicating with the crew on board Dragon, preparing um, for uh, re-entry back into the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, so they're closing their visors and making sure that their five-point harnesses are um, uh, uh, secure, um, basically doing all their preparations uh, for that re-entry. And again, if you're just now joining us, you are tuned into the Inspiration4 mission. This is the first all civilian uh, crew uh, out to orbit. And now they've been out there for, for about three days and now making their way back. Um, and the crew on board is Jared Isaacman, who's the commander for the mission. Um, he is the 38-year-old CEO of Ship4 Payments. Um, he has uh, been a fighter pilot for many, many years. He's flown in over 100 air shows um, and always does a, a fundraiser or charity event with every one of his air shows. And he's doing the same thing with this mission, which is pretty, pretty incredible. Up, up next, we have uh, Haley Arsenault. She's 29 years old, and she is actually the youngest American to fly in space ever. Right, She's also the it, first. It was away from its theaters by his attitude. Continuing to get great calls. Um, Haley is also the first in space with a prosthetic. Um, she is uh, a pediatric cancer survivor and also um, a physician assistant at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, the same place that saved her life when she was 10 years old. got Dr. Cyan Proctor on board, making her way back home with the crew. She is the 51-year-old mission pilot uh, for this mission. Um, she's from Tempe, Arizona, and she holds the seat of prosperity. Uh, she actually was awarded this two seat minutes for... Two minutes um, We got a two-minute call out for that expected uh, blackout period. Uh, but Dr. Cyan Proctor actually was awarded the seat for starting her own, uh, basically, business uh, for her artwork and her poetry. But she's also an incredible um, human being. She's an analog astronaut. She's always wanted to go to space. Um, almost became fun. a NASA astronaut at Salute one point. to initial entry attitude complete. Hey, Dan Gromlin. And now uh, she's on the crew and was able to accomplish her dream. <laughs> And uh, last, but certainly not least, is Chris Hembroski. He's 42, he's a hey, data Parker, engineer hey, um, at Lockheed Martin and a United States Air Force veteran, uh, a um, space enthusiast through and through. And, uh, you know, I was watching the docuseries and um, he's just a, uh, a, a, fa uh, a husband and father first and foremost. And so um, those were our four crew members that are currently making their way back home, <laughs> uh, back down to earth and um, as part of the Inspiration4 mission. I'm so excited to see uh, see them come back home, and I can't wait to hear their stories from being out in space. Again, just the first all civilian crew, you know, they're not professional astronauts. Um, I, I can't wait to hear their stories uh, coming back from that. Yeah, it looks like they've had a really fun time. Um, I, I was watching the um, interview uh, with the St. Jude, uh, St. Jude children uh, yesterday, and uh, they were throwing M&M's all over the, the capsule. Acceleration. And with the microgravity just darting them down and trying to chase them down. down. So uh, they're, they're obviously very, very good friends and um, uh, you know work very, very well together. And we are entering this blackout period. Kilometer altitude. We are entering this blackout period that we have mentioned. Again, it, it is an expected period of time where the vehicle is re-entering back into the Earth's atmosphere. Um, that generates a lot of heat, about 
up to 3,500 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, which causes uh, a plasma layer to form around the vehicle. So we do lose comms with the crew. They've already done uh, their pre-blackout period operations, making sure that their visors are closed, they're strapped in, um, and they're ready to re-enter back into their atmosphere. Um, and so we do expect to, to regain comms about seven minutes after they've entered the blackout period. So the view on your left is Mission Control in Hawthorne, SpaceX's headquarters. Uh, you can see that we've got some folks gathering. Uh, they're also very <laughs> excited for Inspiration4 to return back to Earth. Um, and so, this yeah, we're all waiting. Uh, we're actually uh, about 20, 25 minutes away from splashdown off the coast of Florida. Again, Dragon, even throughout 20? this blackout period, no. it can pilot itself, Whoa. essentially. So, uh, again, the crew just needs to make sure that, um, you know, they're, they're strapped in and enjoy the flight because Dragon will take them to uh, where they need to be. Uh, what, yeah, exactly, uh, David, and uh, uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, you know, they don't really have to do anything aside from control. follow along with this <laughs> event that is happening. Uh, so we did catch them earlier uh, watching some movies <laughs> on their flight back home. Um, but yeah, they, they're, they, they really don't need to do much as Dragon is autonomous. Yes. So after we splash down, um, for those that are maybe watching for the first time or wondering, um, well, how does Dragon get out of the water? Um, so Dragon itself is uh, designed Chinese to be waterproof. Entry. 80 kilometer altitude. Loss of calm. 80 kilometer altitude. Period. So we're, we just heard the call. Anticipated the acquisition of signal in four minutes and 35 seconds. Just heard the call out that Dragon is about 80 kilometers in altitude. Oh, don't you do that to me. We're entering that uh, communications blackout period now, and uh, we just got an update that it's uh, expected to last about four and a half minutes. So again, we'll reestablish communications with the crew uh, after this blackout period, but um, we are um, entering the atmosphere at a very, very, very high velocity, and when we start to um, uh, uh, get a lot of friction from the atmosphere and the space capsule, we start to form that plasma, and plasma tends to interfere with communication. So um, it's a temporary communications blackout, and again, we're going to uh, be, uh, be able to reconnect with them in about four minutes here. And during this time, no, um, no vehicle telemetry is received by Mission Control or the recovery team. There's no ex external commanding of the vehicle or voice communication um, that is not possible at this time. So as a reminder, uh, Dragon is designed to fly itself uh, and continues to fly autonomously Should using Draco thrusters to uh, orient itself during this re-entry. Now, during this re-entry, uh, the vehicle will be slowing down uh, the orbital velocity from 17,500 miles per hour, uh, and the use of just the atmosphere will bring the vehicle down to about 350 miles per hour before we even deploy the drogue chutes. Yeah, um, a few minutes after we get uh, communications again, we are expecting to deploy um, the sets of parachutes. We have two sets. The first, again, are drogue chutes. They are, there's two of them. Their job is to slow the vehicle down from about 350 miles an hour to about 120 miles an hour. And those deploy um, at around um, 18,000 feet. Shortly after that, we'll deploy our main parachutes. There's four of them. Those are larger, um, circular, uh, orange and white uh, chutes. And signal. their job is to slow the vehicle down from on, 120 miles an hour forward. to about 15 miles an Come hour, and then we'll make splash down off the coast of Florida in the Atlantic Ocean. So yeah, Dragon is, again, flying itself. Uh, even the shoots that I had just mentioned about, um, uh, there's sensors. Uh, on Dragon that detect altitude and pressure, and they will um, determine when to fire those um, parachutes. And so uh, pretty much everything on Dragon is autonomous, and again, it's steering itself, it's taking the inspiration for a crew uh, where they need to go uh, for their targeted splashdown. 
Again, if you're just now joining us, we're currently uh, in progress of the blackout period. Um, what this is, is basically the Dragon spacecraft uh, re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, it'll see uh, temperatures, external temperatures of about 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit, building a plasma layer around the vehicle, uh, preventing comms um, and communication with the Dragon spacecraft. Uh, it's expected to last about four and a half minutes. We're a little over halfway through that right now. Um, so we should, uh, in, a, in a couple minutes here, start hearing some comms from the core, uh, checking in to regain that communication with Dragon. Should be hearing from Dragon in the next minute or so. Yeah, this is amazing. This is the first shot of the Dragon <laughs> capsule coming back uh, as part of the Inspiration4 mission. Uh, the crowd here is super excited seeing that for the first time as amazing. well. Um, so yeah, a couple minutes left of um, so the blackout period, and uh, we should be getting comms reestablished with the crew here shortly. What you're seeing on your screen right now is on the left hand side that is mission control hawthorne dragon gps converged expect nominal altitude for drug shoot deploy copy that spacex we show the same and those comms confirm that we have regained comms with Dragon, uh, and they're getting ready Woo! for there the, drone there's Dragon. here shortly. They're back. Yeah, I love these tracking shots. Uh, again, that is Dragon in the center of your screen. Uh, we've got visuals of it, and we're expecting um, drogue shoots deploy, to deploy, and then the main shoots shortly after that here in a couple of minutes. Waiting for drogues. We should be able to see them on this view. Again, a lot of excitement uh, for Inspiration4 crew's return. Uh, waiting on drogue shoot deploy. That happens at about 18,000 feet. Dragon, brace for drogue window. Got that SpaceX, we're bracing. On re-entry, the team is experiencing uh, about three to five Gs. Um, yeah, we heard some words to, to have them brace for a drogue deploy. Uh, they will feel uh, the difference in speed when the uh, shoots do deploy. Um, that was what the, co the uh, core mentioned there. That's such a cool shot of Dragon uh, coming back Amazing down to view. Earth. Amazing view. Look at that view. It looks Amazing. very fast uh, in this camera view here. We have drones! <laughs> awesome. This is a great shot of Dracking looking up Come at the drone shoots. A lot of communication going back and forth between the crew uh, and ground station, but the drogue's job is to slow the vehicle down from about 350 miles an hour to 120. We are expecting the main shoots for these to cut off and the main shoots to come uh, shortly after this. Dragon, 
He's got four healthy mains. We have four mains! All four peri mains. <laughs> main parachutes <laughs> deployed. They're golden. You have visual from the Covey forces. Covey down, 26, good news. <laughs> and at 4.04 p.m. Pacific time, we do have confirmation that the main shoots have deployed. And you can see that on your left-hand screen of a camera looking forward uh, above the Dragon capsule, looking at those four main shoots. 1,000. Copy, 1,000. <laughs> the next event coming up now is a visual confirmation of Splashdown. You can see the Dragon Capsule on your right-hand screen uh, slowly coming down now. We've, we've talked about how fast the vehicle uh, has been traveling, um, but they will be touching down approximately 15 miles per hour when they touch the uh, Atlantic Ocean there. 800, SpaceX. <laughs> we copy 800. Now, the, the Dragon One program had great success with the water landing with 20 successful splashdowns over the course of that program, nine of which were carried out by flight-proven Dragon spacecraft. And this is a great shot. Dragon continuing to descend back towards Earth, again, targeting a landing, uh, excuse me, a splashdown off the coast of Florida in the Atlantic Ocean. Copy 600. Four hundred feet. Copy four hundred. Two hundred, we're bracing. We copy 200. Look at Dragon. Wow. There she is. Inspiration 4, on behalf of SpaceX, welcome home to planet Earth. Your mission has shown the world that space is for all of us and that everyday people can make extraordinary impacts in the world around them. Thank you for sharing your leadership, hope, generosity, and prosperity. And congratulations on your incredible journey. Thanks so much, SpaceX. It was a heck of a ride for us. It's just getting started. Coffee just getting started. So welcome back. <laughs> Inspiration for the Dragon Resilience Capsule has returned. The crew has returned. Uh, what a phenomenal, phenomenal visual that we got. Um, and I love that Jared said, we're just getting started. <laughs> Right, this is the beginning uh, of their journey, uh, of the next steps to the new era in, in human space flight. Um, and just, you know, what, the, what an incredible mission. What an amazing um, view, watching them touch down and splash down into the Atlantic Ocean. You could hear the crowd here so excited to welcome the crew back home. Yes.
So uh, we do have a couple of events uh, that need to happen first before we can start to uh, uh, get the crew out of the capsule. So you can see some boats headed towards Dragon. Um, and uh, uh, you know, the first job is to make sure that the area around Dragon is safe to approach, and then we'll go in there, start uh, rigging the uh, Dragon up to be able to hoist later on onto our main recovery vessel. So uh, they did we also it, guys. heard that uh, Jared had uh, given Amazing. us the confirmation of stable one. What that means is Dragon has um, splashed down and is upright. There's also a stable two. Um, Dragon can this actually be really cool. um, upside down or sideways. Um, it for a few is more minutes and waterproof and has systems where it can I pump seawater into some Star bladders to help keep it upright. So um, again, also stable on one is uh, the, the on, best sorry, possible scenario that we can achieve, and that's what we see on screen right now. And just something to note, um, there are going to be a few operations that happen um, before the crew can get out of the capsule. So they will be strapped into their seats, remain strapped into their seats um, throughout the, this and these operations until uh, basically until hatch open uh, once we have the Dragon capsule on board the recovery vessel. Uh, so we do have some events uh, coming up next. Uh, the um, fast boats will be approaching the Dragon capsule. Uh, they'll be doing some inspections to make sure that it is safe before we begin operations uh, to lift Dragon out of the water onto the recovery vessel. Dragon, SpaceX is go for recovery personnel to approach. Expect personnel alongside in one minute. And copy that, SpaceX. We're looking forward to seeing it. And Dragon, with that, we request to come aboard via display clam. And again, Requesting permission to come aboard via display cam. Permission granted, come aboard SpaceX. What you're seeing on your screen is uh, the recovery team approaching Dragon. Again, they will be uh, starting to do some inspections. Uh, they'll do some ordinance and hypergol checks just to make sure that the vehicle is safe before they begin rigging Dragon uh, to bring the vehicle onto the recovery vessel. And I think on the left-hand screen, that is uh, someone on a jet ski helping to pull some of those chutes out of the water. Um, they did automatically detach from Dragon once they once the vehicle splashed down. Um, so now they are removing them from the water. Yeah, it is super important that we cut those main parachutes. We don't want any type of wind or even the water to uh, pull or drag the, the Dragon capsule. But uh, when we did see Dragon splash down, we also saw really good visuals of the mains being cut as well. Um, there is boat and personnel that are going to go out there and collect um, those chutes as part of the recovery operation. We are expecting about an hour from splashdown until we can get the crew outside of the capsule. Again, we're going through a series of safety checks and some other operations to get uh, Dragon hoisted, rigged up, um, and lifted up onto the main recovery vessel before we can open that side hatch and get the crew out. It was very, very exciting. I think uh, the couple of seconds leading up to Splashdown, you could hear a pin drop here in Hawthorne. <laughs> but as soon as we made contact with the water, excitement erupted, and right. it was just uh, amazing. <laughs> Again, this is the Inspiration4 crew, the first all-civilian mission to orbit with four incredible, incredible uh crew on board and we now have an inside view on Dragon as they are sitting on the ocean water uh, awaiting for the recovery operations. <laughs> Looks like uh, we got a selfie. <laughs> I think Dr. Cyan has taken some post splashdown <laughs> pictures. Uh, well deserved. <laughs> And again, this is standard procedure. We do have um, some crew uh, 
climbing on board Dragon. They're performing some inspections, uh, just making sure that the vehicle is safe prior to the next Dragon step. Dragon SpaceX, Hypergol sweeps and ordnance checks are nominal. Rigging is in progress, approximately two five minutes until capsule lift. Stand by for PMC. All right. So they're going to continue working on getting Dragon out of the water for the next uh, some excitement from the crew on half board. Hour, two and hour. if you noticed and, um, um, the difference in the view, the camera actually has. Um, I will have to cut off here. Normally, I would keep streaming, but I have to cut off here because uh, I have to jump over to Star Trek. Um, yeah, uh, I recommend keep watching this. Um, I'll give you guys the link here in Twitch chat to just go directly to the SpaceX stream if you'd like to continue watching. Uh, bah, 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 bah. All right, in Twitch. There you go. Thank you all for watching. Um, that was awesome. I'm thrilled that Inspiration4 made it back safe. It was an amazing flight, and I'm sure we're going to see a uh, ton of incredible footage. Uh, make sure to watch the, the Netflix documentary. It is really good. It is Countdown uh, Inspiration4 um, Trip to Space. And uh, there are four episodes leading up to launch, and then there will be one more episode that comes out in 12 days on September 30th, which will likely include launch on orbit and landing um yeah thank you all